They're above the reception. There are no strangers here, only friends we haven't met. And as you turn left, once you get into the main reception, you head towards the restaurant, the 1625 room, the dungeon, and also the toilets. So it says, big newspaper piece from the newsletter from 1981 about the coastal castle that's haunted by memories. And that's what this place is. To my right-hand side, there's a massive restaurant with a huge knight suit of armor there in the corner standing with a, a broadsword but I'm not going there I'm walking actually past the toilets where the original house various features are shown with crosses and the big almost baronial thrones to my right hand side there's another small dining room just dropping away to my right hand side as you come to the metal gates you open it up and then you're on the original building that was here first and a circular staircase where there is an ominous sign pointing you to the ghost room but I'm not going there I'm going into the 1625 room where the king of all he surveys Stephen hello hello nice to meet you Very nice Stephen to meet you you're in charge of this amazing operation here I am indeed yes it's a privilege to uh manage this beautiful uh, 17th century castle. It's absolutely fabulous. You're right over the coast as well, so you can see why it was built here as a defence. Not just a castle. It, what was it originally? It seems to me almost like a stately home that's been built into a castle. Yes, that's correct. Um, it was originally inhabited by the Shaw family, who were descendants from Scotland. Uh, they came across here to the Valley Galley area, and they built this castle as their stately home, which we're currently standing in, and it has been passed down from generation to generation from the Shaw family to the present day, right. where the Hastings Hotel group have bought it over. The main reason that I'm here is because when we're talking some of the most haunted places in all of Ireland, you work in it. Now, first of all, tell us the actual story. Who or what is supposed to walk here? Okay, well, we go back to the original descendants of the family, the Shaw family. The story or legend has it that the wife of James Shaw, Lady Isabella, was imprisoned in the very top room of this tower. And she basically tried to commit suicide and fell to her death outside the castle. However, there is a story that perhaps uh, Lord Shaw's henchmen actually pushed her to her death. Right, now that's, it's interesting also, I've heard a slightly different variety of it, that apparently the Shaw family wanted a male son. They wanted a, a child, but they wanted it to be a son to continue the, the family name, and she gave birth to a girl child who was smothered, and that drove her insane, or it certainly altered her mental health, and they ended up locking her away. I presume you, you must have heard that also. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, There has been, obviously, various interpretations of the original story, right. but yes, people have also heard children crying in the castle itself, and have experienced children in the room, in the bed beside them, actually, when, really? when they woke up in the middle of the night and there's a child lying in the bed beside them. So, there has been various apparitions from children to fully grown adults being seen and be present in the castle. Not just by the public but the staff too oh very much so yeah by all members of staff and by visiting guests at this time of night everything changes there's a, a lot of stairs and uh, i already feel as if i've been walking up hundreds this is a we're heading towards a tower room the walls have been painted white on my left hand side there's a rope banister very, very thick rope like you would use on a ship. And I've got to, uh, a gap between, I must have walked up so far about 50, 60 stairs. And they're the big, wide ones there. They don't, they're not easy stairs to walk. And you're curving round and going round and round. On my left hand side, there's the, the slits where you would defend the castle using bows or, I think probably just bows because they're, too small to, to send uh, oil tumbling, but there are some wider ones on the upper turrets that you can do that then. Here, oh, what? why does everything at this time of night sound ominous? Just to the haunted room, and you go through this door. And then from the main steps, 
there's tiny, absolutely minute steps. My shoulders are too wide to go in. Front on, you've got to turn to your side. And each of these stairs are approximately the size of a V-shaped wedge shoebox. And it's actually quite hard to, to get up these door. Oh, there's an, a definite, to my left hand side, there's a tiny window that you can stare out of and uh, you just get a glimpse of the sea washing up on the shore beyond the car park in front of Ballygally Castle. And uh, there's a change in the air. It's heavier. And hang on, one, two, three. Oh. And four. I'm now in the tower room. I'm gonna shut myself in with a snack and a lock. Oh, this isn't good. Let me describe the room. The room is, this is where Isabel in torment after a child had been smothered. And can you imagine it was Isabel's only wish to have a child. It was what she believed she'd been put on this earth for. And that wonder, that glory had been smothered as soon as it was born. They didn't even give her the chance to get to know her own baby. It was taken from her bleeding womb and smothered. There's a picture of Isabel directly in front of me and she, she's looking very, very sad indeed. And I send love and I send respect and I send sympathy to her. In this place, I don't know whether you can I can hear voices. A whispering there, and then there was a, a lower voice. I don't know whether you can pick that up. It's difficult. Directly above the bed, there is a... a si listen, listen. Do you hear some creaking there? I'm standing completely still. Directly in front of me, there's a small bed, the original bed. Oh, more noise. The original bed that Isabel stayed in. By the side of the bed, there's a stool. As I say, I'm not going to move because I want to be able to pick up any noise that I can. To my right-hand side, there's a, a dressing table with a mirror, a case where she kept what few possessions she had. There's a clock on a small window, a, two lights either side with candles, a commode style thing on my right-hand side. Just a, It's basically just a hole in a unit that you'd sit on and poo through it into a potty. In the corner, there's a place for putting your, your clothes. No place to wash them here. And I'm getting noises, I'm getting creaks, I'm getting bangs, just little light ones. This is active, this is, no question about it, this place is active. Listen. I hope you're getting this. Oh, when you come to a strange place where, where you've you've not had this kind of opportunity even to check it out, this is my first time of seeing this place. I'm going to start moving now, so any footsteps you hear will be mine. To my right hand side, there's a tiny, tiny little room. This is a circular room with a very, very low ceiling. All it has in it is a chair next to a window and that window overlooks the beach and it was here that we're told that Isabel in very sad isolation looked out to the sea and yearned for the child that she never knew now it's said that if you sit on this chair and you close your eyes if you can open your senses you're supposed to feel the pain and the angst of Isabel. I'm not gonna do that quite yet, I'm not quite ready for it. I come to places like this and I'm not a medium, I don't, I'm not even sure I trust most of them if I'm honest. Um, 
I'm just an ordinary person, just exactly the same as you. No special gifts. Try to learn as much as I can about things like this. And I've just noticed the thing that most people are freaked about. Directly above the bed, there's a hole in the ceiling. It's not a hole, it's a, it's a square. And it just leads into blackness. And they say that during the day, it's through that hole that Isabel's spirit takes refuge away from prying eyes. And then at, at night time, round about now, when it's pitch black outside, Isabel comes back down to her room to lie in a bed. And we are, I don't know whether I dare, or well, why not? I'm gonna sit on Isabel's bed. Oh, it's a springy thing. But you only know, that's probably the first time that there's been a man in Isabel's bed for a, many a century. I'm gonna ease back and lie on the bed. Oh, hard. I'm in a big long coat because it's, it's been freezing this time of night. I'm lying there and I'm looking up at that intimidating blackness in the ceiling. And hardly any light coming through the windows at all. A hint of moonlight. And as your eyes have become accustomed to it, in the blackness above you, it, it, it does look like it's moving. It's probably just a, an illusion. But this is, the, it's a tiny bed. My feet are hanging over the end of it. Isabel must have been a small lady. I'm 5'10", she must have been 4'11", 5'2". She can't have been very big. And I'm staring up at just the image of Isabel in the picture to the left-hand side. It's so dark you can hardly make it out. It said that if you stare into her eyes during the day, she hypnotizes you. And again, she tries to share her pain. That blackness above is intimidating. Just heard a bang there, the far side of the room. Is that you, Isabel? Is that you, Isabel? Did you get that? Getting noise, a little bit of noise. Oh, definite noise. If that is you. <laughs> if that is you, could you... Could you show yourself? Could you say something? Could you say something? If you say something, it would be my honor. Can you? Can you say something? I think any woman who's lost a child knows that it is a parent's place to die before their children. And I can't begin to imagine that kind of pain. And I have every, every sympathy with you. And this is a it's an uncomfortable bed. I must, I must admit, I'm gonna sit up and, oh, there's a chill sweeping through you. Now there's no open windows. The door's closed. We're at the top of an enclosed tower inside a castle and yet there is a, a wind, oh, there's a wind here. Getting noise to my right hand side. Listen. Excellent. Thank you. The stool, I've just noticed what it is. In the darkness you can't make these things out, but I've just noticed on my right hand side there's a stool by the side of the bed. And it's moving. I 
I'm going to put the microphone closer to it. That's just the bed rattling. Can you hear it kind of a... There's a... There's a stool moving, listen. It stopped. It just stopped. I was thinking, did I start it moving by... Shove in the bed. It's not touching the bed, though. If that, if that's you wanting me out of your bed, Isabel, I'm quite happy to to vacate it. There's solid wooden floorboards. I'm just picking up my sound gear. I'm now standing in the middle of the room and I'm opening up my palms, wanting to try and move anything. I want to move my senses. I want them to... It's something that the people of old, of the old beliefs used to say you were able to do. You can send your eyes into the darkness to reach out. You can send your hearing to seek out what's there to be heard. Send out your sense of smell to take in any... fill your lungs and... There's a smell that I've smelled before. It's a moist, feisty kind of thing, although the room is completely dry. Some say that Isabel deserved this. <laughs> that was the wrong thing to say. It might just have been my imagination, but I am sure something moved past my face within about a foot. And I don't know what it is. And the problem is it's so black and I haven't I haven't got a torch in here. I'm, I'm kind of sweeping my... My foot out in front of me, it's... I can't feel anything on the floor. Oh, hang on, there's something. I'll just reach down and see what it is. It's an old hairbrush. It's an old hairbrush. And I didn't see it on any of the counters when I came in. I've just put it on the, the unit. There's a, a mirror. Oh, that's... There's a mirror that... There's a mirror that... This is interesting. It's got... That thing that I was turning there is the... the thing that holds the mirror in place so that you can position it wherever you like. And yet, even though I've tightened it so that it's looking up at my face... As soon as you let it go, it's, it turns down to the ground as if you're ashamed to show your face. So I'm pointing it at me now. I've tightened it up. And I'm going to let it go. And it swings down again. This is her chest. A metal chest of... Oh. And inside where she would keep all of her belongings. What few things she had, and this is her drawer. A little bit of woodworm in there. We've had something in here. I don't know how that hairbrush moved from wherever it was. I, I, I must admit, when I came in here, and I know it was dark, but the hairbrushes, it's a silver thing with a mirror on the back. And how I did not um, see it wherever it was, that's just me. There's a candle in front of me here. Three windows, two very small. The uh, chair in the corner looking well worn. This is the commode up against the wall. And I've got just one final challenge here. 
It's this tiny circular room with the chair where Isabel spent years of her life before. You gotta remember that the windows that are in here were not there at the time. There were old fashioned wooden framed windows that opened out and even irrespective of how tiny, I'm stepping into the circular room now with that chair that's supposed to make you feel everything that Isabel felt. I'm gonna sit down on that chair now. Oh, oh, it's... And as you look out to your right hand side, you can see the sea, the, the white horses, the waves breaking on a cobbled beach. And the sea's a tidal thing. When the tide's fully in, it's right up to, to the sea wall. And I would imagine she would open the windows and look out and imagine how a child would have grown up to be a fine woman, like she had been. No woman deserves to lose a child, and it's only a woman who has that, that truly knows the hurt. To have lost a, a babe on the glorious day that they were born, they find out that it's a girl, and if th those around her say that a girl is not acceptable. You know, to be honest, do I feel as if, as if I can feel what she felt? Truthfully, no. Truthfully, no. Isabel, I am so sorry for your loss. Sometimes I have been able to feel misery or unpleasantness or fear. Do I feel sad? I feel sad because I know the story, but that's different from feeling sad. And Isabel, if I have disrespected you by saying, some people say it was your fault, it can't be your fault that you have a child that, that they steal away from you. They said it was her fault because she said that she wanted a little girl while everybody around her wanted a son and an heir, and that wasn't her fault. It wasn't your fault, Isabel. You should never, you should never judge yourself in such a fashion. I'm so sorry for your loss, and I thank you for giving me a glimpse if that was you today. I always think, did, did I brush something with my coat and knock something off in the darkness it would be an easy thing to do and you're never really sure whether whether that's the case or not but now i'm just sitting in this circular room gazing out as she must have done for literally years until some people came and you know many people say that she was so hurt that she killed herself Others say that it was the family who were ashamed of the fact that they had one of their relatives essentially locked up. <coughs> In a tower room. My heart stopped briefly there. Now, if I thought that I'd knocked something off before, I know for a fact I didn't knock anything off there. That noise wasn't in this little circular room, it was back in the room where I was. Does that have a meaning? Does that, does that mean something? Listen, I'm getting more noise. Listen. Oh, that's not in this room. I'm in a tiny circular room. I can reach out and touch the doorway. And it looks like there was once a door on here. So whether this was something where else you could lock. <laughs> thank you, Isabel, thank you. Are you with me now? Are you with me now, Isabel? And then you go out back into the main room where we heard that noise before. I must admit, didn't get in there what I had hoped to get in there. Whoa, just me banging into a chair. I think we should leave Isabel in peace. Isabel, thank you. 
And if that actually is you, Isabel, or some other kind of trap form, you do know that you can commune with your daughter. You don't have to stay here. You do know that, don't you? You do know that. You can be together again. Oh, stool's moving again. Are you sitting by the bed? <laughs> Lots of noise in here. And the thing, the thing that makes it actually more unnerving is the fact that sometimes when you come to places that are said to be haunted, you think, is it members of staff? We're in a tower outside of the walls on all four sides here. There is merely air. It's where turret. Yet the sounds in here have to come from within. Within a yard of where I'm standing. I'm in the middle of the room. I'm not close enough to be able to touch any of the furniture. Listen. That's the bed. Listen. Oh, it stopped. No. I can hear the bed springs moving. If you wish to go to bed, Isabel. <laughs> oh, I just heard a car go by this late at night. Uh, it's still a major thoroughfare up the coast. Thanks, Isabel. I'm, I'm leaving now. Blessings to you. Stool's moving. Stool's moving. Do you hear the creak? Stool's moving again. Could you speak? Could you speak? Can you speak? I'm getting a voice. Listen, it's a low voice though. Can you make that out? live from Ballygally Castle on the outskirts of Belfast. <laughs>